What's up guys, it's Ivan and today I am going to read to you a successful statement of purpose for the PhD in Molecular and Cellular Biology at UC Berkeley. Before we get into the video, I do want to remind you that I offer a statement of purpose review service on the freelance platform called Fiverr which is linked down below. If you want constructive feedback on your statement of purpose to increase your chances of getting admitted into your dream program, go to the link down below and I look forward to working with you. Also, I am hosting a statement in the purpose workshop on Wednesday, December 20th from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. To register for the workshop, click on the Google form down below in the description and I look forward to seeing you at the workshop. When my older brother attempted to take his own life, my family gave me one sentence as a weak explanation for why. Sarah, it's an issue with his brain, a chemical imbalance. Although I was only 12, this moment set the course for my future study of neuroscience. I craved an understanding of how chemical changes in my brother's brain could ultimately impact his thoughts and feelings. By the time I began college, this curiosity had led me to the vast, beautiful, and frustrating unknowns of neuroscience. My subsequent explorations into molecular neuroscience solidified my intentions to pursue a PhD and dedicate my career to illuminating the brain's underlying molecular mechanisms. Alright, this introduction is very powerful. So the author starts off by immediately getting to their aha moment that drove their decision to pursue a PhD in their chosen field of study. So they started off with one sentence describing a personal experience that led to their decision to pursue a PhD in neuroscience. So they talked about their family member, her brother, committing suicide, right? This heavy topic. The author doesn't go into a lot of detail about that. They just talk about it in two sentences, one with what their parents explained was the reason. And that reason drove their decision to look at neuroscience in this specific way, right? In this more biological way. So when you are crafting your introduction, you have two options. You can do what this author did here and you can start with an anecdote or a short story of that aha moment that drove you to pursue a PhD in your research interest. The alternative way is for you to just jump right and tell a committee your career goals, research interests, the impact that you want to make, the program you're applying to, the institution, and why you are selecting that institution to complete a PhD or whatever graduate degree you're, you're completing. I do want to caution you that I have already reviewed hundreds of statements of purpose and some of the common mistakes I, I see in the introduction are that applicants take too much time getting to the point. They describe their whole life story, they try to include so many stories into one short paragraph, or sometimes they even write more multiple paragraphs that are personal stories. The committee is not looking for a whole personal statement. A personal statement differs from a statement of purpose. A personal statement is dedicated towards describing your personal experiences, whereas a statement of purpose is more driven by you explaining your practical and work experiences that have led you to pursue this degree, right? And so I often see applicants write their whole life story in the introduction. Don't do that. That for one gets boring, but also the committee is interested in learning about the practical experiences you have had in research, in your work, extracurriculars, internships, etc. that have shaped your desire to pursue a PhD in your chosen field, as well as the research that you want to conduct, right? So this applicant does a really nice job in a short powerful paragraph describing how they got to the point of wanting to pursue a PhD in their chosen field. At the University of North Carolina, my surface level fascination with the brain evolved into a deeper intellectual interest in synapse regulation. In in Dr. Patricia Manis's lab, I characterized two neuronal cell adhesion molecules, which we hypothesized might have a role in regulating syn synapse remodeling. I was particularly intrigued by the homology between these two receptors, and I sought to uncover similarities in their signaling pathways. To test these theories, I pioneered our lab's analysis of neuronal morphology and synaptic biochemistry using knockout mice. The the challenge of designing the most efficient and simple experiments to answer multifaceted questions enthralled me. With practice, I learned effective ways to deconstruct research questions into di digestible experiments. My biochemical investigations demonstrated little signaling overlap between the two receptors and raised the exciting possibility that different cell adhesion molecules might selectively eliminate individual synapses. My discovery of these receptors' functions and 
their exclusive signaling pathways led to two publications and a manuscript that is currently under review. This is a great paragraph where the author describes their research experience. So when you are describing your research experience, I want you to do the following things. You want to name the project, the objectives of the projects or also known as the hypothesis of your project. You also want to mention the name of the lab, the mentor that is supervising your work, and then you want to get into the actual research. What are the questions you're trying to find? What are the hypotheses you're trying to find answers to? The methodology you are using to find those answers, the results, and then the implications. This author does that really well. I do want to caution you that you should get to the point and answer all the questions that I probed earlier in one sentence. You can tell this author here did exactly that. They described that they did this work at the University of North Carolina under the mentorship of Dr. Patricia Manis's lab. They described the topic. They described how they tested out their theories, the result of those theories, and the implications were that they developed a methodology and that that methodology led to two publications and one manuscript under review. So I want you to use that exact same template when you are describing your undergraduate research or other research projects. After working in an academic lab, I was curious to see how basic research is translated into helpful therapies for people like my brother. To explore this translational side of drug development, I interned at Vertex Pharmaceuticals in the drug metabolism and pharmacokinetics department. I implemented microinfusion pumps to streamline rodent dosing regimes to be more accurate and reproducible while also decreasing the number of animals needed to test each compound. I had the opportunity to present my research to Vertex Research and Development Executive Leadership and my project was later integrated into the global preclinical pipeline. While I remain fascinated by therapy development, I discovered at Vertex how much these therapies demand on advances in basic science research. I was motivated by this experiment and sought an opportunity to investigate the molecular mechanisms of psychiatric disorders with Dr. Morgan. Morgan Shang at the Broad Institute. This next paragraph describes an internship the author had with this organization called Vertex Pharmaceuticals. So they do a great job again of following the following template. They describe where they conducted the work. They describe what their role was in conducting that work. The process of them conducting the work as well as the presentation they had to do to the executive leadership and the implications of that work and presentation. And so the author here talks about their vertex pharmaceuticals work in the drug metabolism and pharmacokinetics department. They talked about what they did. So they did microinfusion pumps to streamline rodent dosing regimes. And then they talked about how they presented their work to executive leadership and how that presentation led for them to implement that research into their practice. Then they also ended the paragraph by alluding to what they learned, right? So they learned the importance of conducting research. I do want to remind you that a PhD is a research degree. So this applicant is tying in their practical experience as an intern with why they want to pursue a PhD or a research degree. They talk about how, yes, it's important for me to be able to translate research into practice, but there's also some limitations to that practical experience, right? So the limitations that the author proclaimed here were that there needs to be more emphasis on basic scientific research to really improve the pharmaceutical field and that's why they're not only pursuing a PhD but also that led them to apply to another research project which you're going to talk about in the next paragraph. Working with Dr. Morgan Shang has been my most formative experience as a young scientist. Under Dr. Shang's mentorship my thinking about scientific questions has been fundamentally expanded and restructured leading me to approach research with creativity and originality. I am fortunate to also have the responsibility and intellectual autonomy to guide my own projects in Dr. Shang's lab. My research investigates how overactivation of the immune systems to the complement cascade might lead to neuronal damage and synapse loss. My main project aims to identify neuronal activators of the complement cascade. The complement cascade is a system of innate immunity that in addition to its canonical role in pathogen defense regulates microglial engulfment of synapses. In my first year I identified 
identified and characterized a novel binding partner of this molecule, the initiator protein of the complement cascade. Currently, I am using this and immunohistochemistry to knock out mouse models of this binding partner to further investigate transcriptional and cellular changes in neurons and microglial. With a manuscript in preparation, my research will be the first to identify a binding partner of this in the brain that modulates complement activity and alters microglial engulfment of synapses. More broadly, my research provides insight into possible mechanisms of synapse loss in neurodegenerative diseases and psychiatric disorders. I recently presented these data to the 100 plus scientists at the Stanley Center for Psychiatric Research, which sparked new collaborations for our lab and was a valuable opportunity for me to share my research with the larger scientific community. Through my comprehensive training in the Shang Lab, I have cultivated my ability to think critically and communicate effectively, and I feel well prepared for graduate education. I have cherished the opportunity to apply my formal background in biochemistry to research at the nexus of immunology and neuroscience, and I plan to pursue similar interdisciplinary projects in graduate school. These two next paragraphs talk about their next research experience. So they talk about Dr. Morgan Shang's lab and how this author was able to drive their own research and what those research ended up doing in terms of their preparation for graduate school. So we learn a little bit about what they are investigating in the lab, right? Their own research projects. So they talk about how they're investigating the overactivation of the immune system through the complement cascade, right? And so they're being specific in terms of what type of research they're conducting. In the paragraph that follows, they describe exactly what the methodology was and the findings of their project. I want you to do the same thing when you're describing your research experience. At the end of the second paragraph, the author talks about how they presented their research at a conference in their field and how they were able to generate partnerships because of that presentation. They described one sentence on what they learned from that experience and how that experience has led them to better prepare for graduate school. So if you're going to do that, make sure you describe that in one sentence and then you focus the experience on explaining exactly what you did with your research. Then they end that by describing the implications of the work, right? So they describe how they have a manuscript in preparation and how they are planning to do more of this work in the future in their undergraduate career. I believe that joining the University of California Berkeley's Molecular and Cellular Biology program would allow me to develop the research experience and intellectual framework necessary to conduct cutting edge and high quality research. Specifically, I would be honored to work with Dr. Karu Seijo to continue investigating the molecular mechanisms of microglial in neurodegeneration. Additionally, I would appreciate working with Dr. Helen Beta on neuronal MTOR signaling in neurodevelopmental disorders. I am also fascinated by the investigations of Dr. John Flannery. Dr. Flannery's research into gene therapies for retinal diseases are new to me, but excite my interest in developing innovative therapeutics. In addition to a wealth of researchers who fit my current research interests, the MCB program provides an exceptional and highly interdisciplinary training environment where I could expand and integrate my knowledge of neurobiology with other disciplines such as immunology and biochemistry. So this is the why this program, why this institution paragraph. And the first thing that I want you to know is that it's very short and concise. For a PhD program, you want to focus on research fit, which means that you have to identify one to three faculty whose research closely aligns with yours. Then what you want to do is you want to name the faculty what their expertise is and how their expertise is going to help advance your research agenda. And so I want you to do that when you are describing the faculty that you potentially want to be mentored by and work with when you are a PhD student. I am enthusiastic about the exploration, challenges, and growth that lie ahead for me in graduate school. And I hope these experiences will be at UC Berkeley. Ultimately, I aspire to lead my own lab as an academic professor or principal investigator. My research interests will undoubtedly evolve with more training, but I remain committed to exploring basic science with the goal of advancing the therapeutical treatment of a range of mental disorders. Personally, I am 
indebted to the scientists who came before me and helped develop effective therapies for major depressive disorder, my brother with the help of antidepressants is now living a, a full and happy life. With training from UC Berkeley, I am confident that my research background, aptitude for learning, and ability to thrive working independently and collaboratively will allow me to significantly contribute to our molecular understanding of the brain. So I really like this concluding paragraph. So a couple things that you could do in your concluding paragraph is mention your career goal. You could do this both in the introduction but also in the conclusion. You want to remind the committee of why you're applying for a PhD. So as you can tell, this applicant is interested in being an academic professor as well as a principal investigator who leads their own lab. Then they also talk about, again, their research interests and the impact, the broader impacts that the applicant wants to make in their field. I misspoke earlier in the introduction, but apparently her brother just had suicidal thoughts and didn't really commit suicide. So what the applicant does well is that they reiterate that story about their brother from the introduction at the end. So they talk about how scientists were able to create antidepressants to help their brother live a full and happy life. And that's why they also want to use research to develop pharmaceuticals like this to help others with disorders such as the brother's disorder. And so that speaks to the broader impacts and the passion driving their pursuit of a PhD. Then they end by describing a little bit about what it looks like for them to be in this PhD program at UC Berkeley. They talk about working on independent and collaborative research projects alongside faculty and their peers and labs and that they want to use that to contribute to the molecular understanding of the brain. And so you can tell that this applicant in the conclusion is very specific to what they want to do with the PhD in their given field. And I want you to do the same thing in your statement of purpose. All right, guys, so I conclude my video on reading the statement of purpose for a PhD in molecular and cellular biology at UC Berkeley. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments down below. And I look forward to answering those questions. Thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in the next video.